Okay, so now we're going to look at some trips at the extremes of the system, like towards the termini. So say we want to go from Mount Druitt here. Here's Mount Druitt. We want to go to Emu Plains, which is right here. We want to see how frequently we can get trains at 1 p.m. on April 7th. So you'll see here that we have one at 1.12 p.m., one at 1.42, one at 2.12, and then one at 2.42. That's a 30-minute wait between successive trains. So now let's say I wanted to make the reverse trip. I wanted to leave Emu Plains and arrive at Mount Druitt. And, and I was interested in how frequently I get trains around 8 p.m. on a Monday evening. So here you'll see we have one that leaves at 8.29 next at 9.29, next at 10.29, and then 11.29. And so the reason the reason I picked um, Emu Plains as the origin station and Mount Druid as the destination for this trip is because in the opposite direction, you may actually see more frequent trains because this is pretty close to the evening rush hour. Yeah, again, here you can see that you get trains roughly every hour and so, obviously, at this point, the system seems to function much more like a commuter rail system than it does a rapid transit system. Now let's look at this segment between Riverstone Station here and Richmond Station here. This is, once again, one of the segments towards the extremes of the T1 line. All right, so... Departing Riverstone Station just after noon, you have a train at 1221, next one's at 1251, and one at 121 p.m., and then 151 p.m. So you get trains every half hour. All right, so after 8 p.m. on a Monday evening, departing Richmond and arriving at Riverstone here, You'll see that we get trains roughly every half hour. One leaving at 8.18, one at 8.48, one at 9.18, and one at 9.48. So this is actually fairly comparable to rapid transit frequencies on non-interline segments. And, and the term interlining is something that we'll cover in more detail when we delve more deeply into the system's map. But you can see trains every half hour around this time is far better than frequencies of the Long Island Railroad. And we didn't even look at the extremes of the Long Island Railroad network. Like we didn't quite look towards the end of the system, the end furthest away from Manhattan. But uh, even in the portions we looked at, the frequencies were far less than they are here. So there you got trains, you know, sometimes every hour and a half, but here you get trains every half hour. Now we're going to look at the late evening trip between Waterfall Station and Sutherland Station. This is on the eastern suburbs in Illawarra Line, the T4 line. So you'll see we have trains departing at 8.24 p.m., 8.54 p.m., 9.24 p.m., and 9.54 p.m. And in case I forgot to clarify, this is on a Monday evening. And if we change the time to just afternoon, we'll see the same service frequency of trains every 30 minutes. So we'll have one leaving at 12.24, one at 12.54, one at 1.24 p.m., and one at 1.54 p.m. Now we're going to look at the trip between MacArthur Station here and Campbelltown Station here. You'll see that this segment, in addition to being served by the T2 Airport Inner West and South Line, that's this line on the legend, it's also serviced by one intercity line. And uh, that's marked in gray here. You can see in small lettering, two Southern Highlands Line.
So here you'll have a train departing at 12, 12 p.m. And again, we're looking between MacArthur, looking at between MacArthur Station here and Campbelltown Station here just after noon on a Monday. We'll have a train departing at 12, 12, 12 p.m., one at 12.28, one at 12.58, one at 1, 12 p.m. And I've mentioned this in a previous video, but the gray circle inside of the orange circle indicates that this is not a suburban train. This is an intercity train. And the fare scheme may be a bit different, so you may be paying higher fares for riding on the intercity lines because they make fewer stops but they do add to the service frequency. So here you can see this is a 16 minute wait, a half hour wait, then a 14 minute wait. So this is actually very, very good service for the for being the end of the systems network. I wanna make another point here. This map shown here is just a suburban networks map. And the intercity lines actually run past where the suburban lines end. They, they typically run from stations in the central business district, but they bypass many of these intermediate stations that the suburban lines stop at. You can see where they continue in gray at the end of the suburban lines. So you can see this says here to South Coast Line, it says to Southern Highlands Line, here says to Blue Mountains Line, and this says the Central Coast and Newcastle line. Well, let's say we were looking at this same trip from MacArthur to Campbelltown, but just after 8 p.m. on a Monday evening. Let's see how frequently we can get trains. See, we have one departing at 8.12 p.m., one at 8.24, one at 8.27, and one at 8.42. So a 12-minute wait, a 3-minute wait, and a 15-minute wait. You can also see that this list includes an intercity train, so that adds the frequency. Were it not for that train, you'd have a 15-minute wait between the 812 train and the 827 train rather than a 12-minute wait. But again, even if you excluded this, every 15 minutes in the late evening is quite frequent for being the end of the systems network. So I guess all of that having been said, even at the extremes, this system seems to function more like a rapid transit system than it does a commuter rail system. And I'm going against what I said earlier in this video, looking at the one hour service frequency between Emu Plains and Mount Druitt. But when you compare to North American systems around this time, Seeing, seeing trains every 20 to 30 minutes in the late evenings is not uncommon. You know, perhaps European systems run trains more frequently, but again, when you compare with like the DC Metro system, which is considered a rapid transit system in North America, you'll see that some of the late evening frequencies, even at the extremes of this network, seem to be comparable to those of the DC metro system. Perhaps slightly more, and in in a couple of selected cases, a lot more, like the trip between Emu Plains and Mount Druid. But overall, fairly comparable.